Welcome to CoreLogic's Housing Market Update for May 2024, brought to you by First National Real Estate. Australian home values moved through a 15th straight month of growth in April, with CoreLogic's National Home Value Index rising by 0.6%, on par with the pace of gains recorded in both February and in March. Multi-speed conditions have become increasingly evident, with the mid-sized capitals continuing to lead the pace of growth. Perth remains at the top of the growth charts with a 2% rise in April, followed by Adelaide at 1.3% and Brisbane at 0.9%. The monthly change in Sydney is held reasonably firm around the 0.4% mark in each of the past three months, while Melbourne's market has broadly stabilised after recording a subtle 0.8% dip over the three months to January. The smaller capitals have emerged from relatively soft conditions, with both Hobart and the ACT recording three months of consistent, albeit mild, rises in home values. Almost every capital city is recording stronger growth conditions across the lower value range of the market. This shift towards stronger conditions across lower price points can also be seen between the housing types, with growth in unit values outpacing house values over the past three months. Regional markets have shown slightly stronger quarterly growth over the past five months than their capital city counterparts, following a 10-month period where the combined capitals index was outperforming. Looking at value movements over the past three months, the strongest regional markets were aligned with the strongest capital cities. Regional WA led the pace of gains, followed by regional SA and regional Queensland, while regional Victoria was the only rest of state market to record a decline in values over the rolling quarter. Home sales look to have moved through a cyclical peak in November last year. Although the monthly trend in home sales is highly seasonal, the less seasonal six-monthly trend has remained relatively flat since the November rate hike. Despite the flatter trend, estimated sales over the past three months are tracking 8.6% higher than at the same time last year, and about 5.1% above the previous five-year average. However, it's likely the combination of worsening affordability and low sentiment will keep a lid on the volume of home sales until interest rates start to track lower. Nationally, rents were up 0.8% in April, a slight slowdown in the rate of growth relative to February and March when the National Rental Index rose by 0.9% and 1% respectively. The slowdown in rental growth is likely to be partly seasonal, with the first quarter of the year generally coinciding with a lift in student demand and new leases at the beginning of the year. Additionally, as we move through the peak in net overseas migration, we could see rental demand gradually easing. Although rental growth may be tapering, supply remains extremely short, and the trend towards smaller households seen through COVID has been very slow to reverse, further amplifying rental demand. It's likely rental growth will remain well above average for some time yet. At a national level, rents have been rising at a faster pace than values since November last year, supporting a rise in gross rental yields. In April, the national gross rental yield rose to 3.75%, the highest reading since October 2019, and up from a record low of 3.16% in January of 2021. Now let's take a look at the housing trends across each of the capital cities. Sydney home values have continued along a modest upwards trajectory, rising by 0.4% in April to be 1.3% higher over the first four months of the year. Although the change in home values remains in positive territory, growth conditions have slowed sharply relative to the first half of last year, when values were consistently rising at more than 1% month on month. Lower quartile house values are now recording the fastest rate of growth, up 2.6% in the year to date, followed by a 1.9% rise in lower quartile unit values. Listing numbers remain in relatively short supply, tracking 10.6% below the previous five-year average at the end of April. Melbourne is the only capital city where housing values fell over the first four months of the year, nudging 0.3% lower. The supply of homes is nowhere near as tight as other capital cities, with listings tracking almost 10% higher than at the same time last year and 7% higher on the five-year average. On the flip side, the softer growth conditions mean Melbourne is one of the few cities where housing affordability has shown some level of improvement. While housing values are relatively soft, rents continue to rise swiftly, up 10.2% for houses over the past year and 8.8% higher across the unit sector. The pace of growth in Brisbane housing values remains at the high end of the spectrum across the capital cities, however the trend has been slowing since the rate hike in November last year. The monthly rise of 0.9% was the lowest in 12 months. The gradual slowdown in value growth has been driven by Brisbane houses, 
while the growth trend in Brisbane units has actually remained firm at 1.6% in April. Similar to other capitals, housing values are now rising at the fastest pace across the lower quartile of the market, with values are up 5% in the past three months, compared with a 2% rise in upper quartile values. Adelaide home values increased by 1.3% in April, a subtle slowdown relative to March when the monthly growth rate was 1.4%. The unit sector has led the pace of capital gains over the past year, with values up 14.5% in 12 months, compared with a 13.9% increase in house values. Similarly, lower quartile home values have risen at double the pace of the upper quartile over the year to date, up 6.2% and 3.1% respectively. With housing affordability becoming more challenging, it's likely more demand is being deflected to lower priced areas, including the northern suburbs and the outer south, as well as the unit sector, where the median value is almost $290,000 lower than the median house value. The Perth housing market seems to be running its own race, with a quarterly rate of growth in home values rising to 6%, the largest increase since the first quarter of 2021, when interest rates were at generational lows. Despite such strong growth conditions, Perth's median value remains at the low end among the capital cities. That's a legacy of the long period of weak housing conditions prior to 2019. With values rising this rapidly, it won't be long before Perth records a higher median dwelling value than Adelaide. Perth rental growth is also the highest in the nation, with rents up 13.6% in the past 12 months. Hobart's housing market has emerged from a near two-year slump, with the past three months recording a consistent, although subtle, rise in home values to be up 0.8% over the rolling quarter. Values remain 11.9% below their March 22 peak, with house values down 11.5% and unit values down a smaller 9.9%. Alongside some renewed upwards pressure on values, the number of homes for sale is now slightly lower than at the same time last year. Rental markets have also emerged from a period of weakness, with Hobart rents rising over each of the past six months. However, the annual trend remains slightly in negative territory, down 0.2%. Darwin housing values are up 0.6% in April, in line with the national average. However, the monthly change can show some volatility in Darwin. The quarterly change at 1% and the annual change at 1.9% are well below the national trends, highlighting a relatively flat housing market across the northern capital. Rental trends are also reasonably soft, especially in the unit sector where rents are up 1.4% over the past year, compared with a 5% rise in house rents. Despite the relatively low rental growth, Darwin rental yields remain by far the highest of any capital city, averaging 6.5% gross. Canberra housing values have recorded three months of consistent but subtle growth, with values up 1% over the rolling quarter to be 2.1% higher over the past 12 months. The relatively soft conditions have been evident through the second half of 2023 and into 2024, following a year of falling values through the early part of the rate hiking cycle. Lower quartile house values have seen the most significant rise through the year to date, up 1.5%, compared with the 0.8% growth rate across the overall market. Rents have also moved back into positive annual growth, with house rents up a mild 1.9% over the past year, and unit rents rising by 1.5%. The persistent rise in housing values despite an array of downside factors that would normally act to push prices lower can be drawn back to the insufficient supply of housing relative to demand. There are a few ways to measure housing supply. One is to measure how many homes are available to purchase based on advertised listing numbers. Over the four weeks ending April 28th, CoreLogic estimates there were 76,265 homes listed for sale across the combined capitals. 17.6% below the previous five-year average. At the same time, the number of residential sales in April was estimated to be 2.4% above the previous five-year average for this time of the year. Such a mismatch between available supply and demonstrated demand is keeping markets skewed in favour of sellers in most cities. Capital city homes are currently selling in a median of just 27 days compared with the decade average of 30.7 days, and most cities are recording lower than average levels of vendor discounting. We can also see evidence of low supply in the number of homes being built. In the 12 months to September 2023, roughly 174,000 new dwellings were completed compared with underlying demand for around 264,000 dwellings. The undersupply of well-located housing is recognised as a national crisis. However, the hurdles blocking a rapid and significant housing supply response remain substantial. 
high construction and holding costs, as well as tight labor supply for construction-related trades. Timeframes between a dwelling commencement and a completion have blown out and profit margins remain thin. Eventually, housing demand and supply will converge, driven by slowing population growth and at some stage a ramp up in residential construction activity. Given persistently low levels of dwelling approvals, the timeline for a material ramp up in completed housing supply is still a long way off. But there remains a substantial number of dwellings yet to be completed in the construction pipeline. Fewer dwelling commencements should help to increase capacity for completion of existing projects. In the meantime, it looks as though interest rates could stay higher for longer. The 1% rise in inflation through the March quarter has seen many economists, as well as financial markets, push their forecasted timing for rate cuts back and reignited some speculation that interest rates could even rise again. With high interest rates, the recent upside surprise on inflation, a gradual loosening in labor markets and growing housing affordability challenges, along with a slowdown in economic activity, the downside risk for housing markets is building. Despite the worsening risk profile, housing values are likely to be propped up by the mismatch between housing supply and demand, a situation that doesn't look like it will change in the near future. We will be keeping an eye on the trends through the month, so stay tuned to the CoreLogic website for our regular updates at corelogic.com.au.